Hello, y'all. It's um 11.41 p.m. I thought I was going to get to fall asleep easily and sleep like a baby tonight. But, <clears throat> well, so far I have not been able to fall asleep. I hope it's not the case that my sleep pattern is off or circadian rhythm. Because, you know, well, I'm not going to say last night. But I didn't get to fall asleep until after 4 o'clock um, this afternoon. I mean, I'm sorry, this morning. 4 o'clock this afternoon and then woke up at 10 and my sleep was spotty. So tonight I was feeling really sleepy and I laid down for a while. I thought I was going to get to sleep good, but um, so far I have not gotten to go to sleep. And I don't want to, I don't want it to where I, I can't get any sleep until after 4 o'clock in the morning. I hate that. I would rather be, you know, falling asleep now. <clears throat> so, um, I'm test. The reason why I'm doing this in the dark, this video, because I'm trying to test this thing out to see that to see whether or not if I can do a video in the dark at night inside this motel. And see if it would take up less storage. Just trying to experiment to try to see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Trying to see if it would take up less storage space on my phone. Like um, when I'm. Like when I was. um By the sleep spot where that girl lied on me. And the police ran me off and banned me from that spot. Um, I don't. I, I don't think that I experienced um having like when I did a video I don't think I experienced um <clears throat> having um my storage space um like using up a lot of storage space at night I mean I guess there was a little bit brightness a little bit of light but when I was by the bay <clears throat> um sleeping by the bay um when I did my videos I can do um <clears throat> a 25 minute video and it it could take up less it seemed like less than one gigabyte but during a day or in natural light um it takes up four gigabytes so, um, so I'm just, um, I'm surprised that, um, the previous videos that I did earlier, that, um, I got a lot of thumbs up on those. Thank you. You know, thank, that shows that you believe and support me telling the truth. Because, you know, I'm getting the same hate and the same treatment as um, people who are either celebrities or related to a celebrity or come out of Hollywood and they speak the truth about being abused. <clears throat> you know, I'm getting that same kind of treatment. And I saw somebody who did um, a YouTube live that um show jaguar right um resurfacing again and speaking out against the industry and speaking out against r kelly and them and um <clears throat> she was saying how they basically like i think she was saying erica badu and jill scott or somebody i could be wrong but you know people trying to tell radio stations not to play her music so that's like when you're a targeted individual and, you, you know, they say do not hire this person or something like that. And, you know, she spoke on her abuse, too, like talking about what R. Kelly threatening her, you know, threatening her career for if she if she would have ever exposed him. And she said that the fact that she'd been raped before that pretty much triggered her. You know, and speaking of Jaguar Wright, that J. Angel Raw Honey perp 
who also calls herself Veggie Jess and Mango Sugar and whatever other different names, but I call her J Demon Rotten Shit. She's been bullying, bullying, harassing, and stalking me everywhere online and teaming up with my twin sister and calling me crazy and attacking me viciously nonstop just because I defended Jaguar right. And I'm like, this is too much. <clears throat> you know, doing everything. I mean, I don't see her harassing other people who defended Jaguar right. I don't understand. So she was just a random person who, when I um, defended Jaguar Wright and said Jaguar Wright is a targeted individual being gang stalked, you know, by people like Clyde Davis and them trying to shut her up. Here, this Jessica person, you know, been stalking and cyber stalking and following and harassing me and trying to destroy me nonstop. And she recently was telling me that I will not rest until I succeed at getting you locked up in a mental institution. And I'm getting you banned from Uber and stuff like that. You know. <clears throat> but. Maybe that, that um, Veggie just per Maybe she's ignorant to how Hollywood operates. And how. But, but I know that she knows what the hell she's. Or maybe she does know. And she's. You know, part of the order of the Eastern Star and a witch and stuff like that, you know. So, <clears throat> I wanted to say that when I first create, I said, I think I said it before, that right when I first created my um, Psych World YouTube channel that's now shut down against my will, just like the, the previous, I, I mean, I'm not going to say the previous video, but one of them. I mean, lately, they've been trying to, when I get a support, when I finally do get support of thumbs up, it's like, they shut down my comments on my videos. And most people don't even comment on my videos like they're afraid to talk to me or something. <clears throat> so, um, I get mainly perp comments and spam comments and hardly any supportive comments. You know, I don't get that many supportive comments. You know, um... So, my original, my Psych World channel was originally supposed to be me talking about foster care abuse and narcissistic abuse. And then, um, I had already figured out that I was being gang stalked, but I finally was able to put the pieces of the puzzle together and didn't know there was a, such a targeted individual community on YouTube and, like, I fi I had my final confirmation and then just right in right on time when I was talking about narcissistic abuse and foster and biological family abuse and everything not just telling all my business but ex but speaking out against the abuses that have happened to in the injustices that have happened to me and I have never gotten to have any closure and still don't have any closure about unfair things that have happened to me so um I'm, you know, I mean, so, I mean, I get a lot of people talking about, oh, just stick to your targeting and stop talk, talking about your personal life or your personal business. I'm exposing my abuse that I've been through also because, you know, it's related to my target. It's how I became tar part of how I became targeted. And, you know, I recently saw a video like yesterday when Raz B from B2K um, he spoke out against, you know, his cousin Chris Stokes and Marcus Houston, um, molesting and abusing him. And he said that they bullied him out of the country so badly that he had to move to China. So, and, and, and he was being gang stalked and Quentin Tarver as well. And Quentin Tarver got killed in the car. I mean, that was a sacrifice. And his cousin Darius Tarver was a sacrifice. <clears throat> and I'm, you know, people have told me that I'm supposed to be set up for sacrifice. So if if I'm supposed to be targeted in tr human traffic and sacrifice and have whatever else happen to me, I am, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling everything, you know, everything to the best of my memory. 
and certain things are too shameful to even speak about you, you know too embarrassing and shameful <clears throat> you, you know um and I'm trying to get y'all to see certain things that certain abuses that you go through as a child and here I'm being blamed for my own character as an adult but psychologically I heard there's a such thing of you know if a person has repeated childhood trauma and abuse then they grow up grow up as adults you know to be a certain way you know and I I try to deprogram as much as I can and try to undo the abuse that happened to me and say that I'm not going to be that type of person of what happened to me, you know. <clears throat> so, a lot of people are judging me as a person because of events that happened when I was a child and think that I'm still this or that kind of person. <clears throat> so, um, you know, if they said I had bad behavior in school that, I mean, in elementary school, I would bite and kick and scratch other students. I don't go, I'm not going around biting, kicking, and scratching people out in society right now, you know, but I did not know that I was doing that, acting out the abuses that happened to me. I wasn't bitten, but, you know, biting is an act of violence, you know, but I didn't, I mean, I was beat and scratched and, you know, locked up, me and my twin sister, you know, locked up in the hot laundry room by the brother Mark, or locked up in, in small janitorial closets as a child and here I'm got a freaking all the jobs left is freaking janitorial you know to, to leave me you know feeling traumatized like like the foster mom used to force us to clean up as a punishment and, and then you know the idea of being re-traumatized every day you know just to see a small janitorial closet and you know, they think I'm weird at work because I don't, because of me having OCD and me not liking to um, clean up between small spaces and stuff like that, you know. <clears throat> it's just very difficult that because of abuse is the reason, you know, years of abuse and then can't even function in society. And then society blames you and then you get more abuse and bullying and lack of compassion. You, you know. So, <clears throat> I mean, I have a right to have a voice on what I've been through. And it's not just telling personal business, <clears throat> you know, because if y'all think that y'all can try to take me down and stuff like that, I'm just, you know, speaking truth about what happened. Back then, at three years old, what could I record at three years old? I, I didn't have any cell phones at three years old. They didn't, well, at least to my own knowledge, they, they weren't popular or they didn't exist in, in 1986. <clears throat> you know, being forced to, to kneel. I mean, and nobody, and, and what about the foster mom's enablers of abuse? All the people who enabled her. Y you know, and I'm still hurting these days. With the foster mom trying to say I had no business driving or not the mentality to drive a car and stuff like that I mean and and I thought that was certain abuses and things that I went through was just a phase a foster care phase as a teenager and I thought that once I became an adult I thought that I can live my life and live out my dreams and stuff but no I didn't would have never dreamed about being 38 years old and still blocked from driving a car you know by people who don't have that authority or, or scared to try to venture out you know, I mean, if I, when I was living in Los Angeles, people condemned me for going to Oceanside to go to the beach. And they're like, well, why don't you go back to Los Angeles? Well, why don't I have a right to venture out and explore another beach? What is wrong with that? I'm pretty sure you've been to more than one beach, so why are you telling me go back to Los Angeles? You know, I mean, Oceanside's beaches are prettier and cleaner. You know, everything about Los Angeles is dirty, you know, and so, <clears throat> I mean, I'm surprised I survived so long living in dirty-ass Los Angeles. Everything was filthy and dirty. 
when I called myself trying to go out there and called myself trying to go to New York, both places didn't work out because of homelessness. You know, I tried to see about a Spanish career and Spanish translation and all these mental health setups to set me back, you know. And, and then all these people think that I didn't play my cards right or I um, made a whole bunch of mistakes and failures that I need to own up for, own up to and stuff when y'all don't even know the truth about what was going on with me. So I'm going to go for now because I don't, I hope I didn't use up too much storage space.